Nigeria doesn't make sense anymore. My life doesn't make sense anymore. I remember when life used to make sense. You know, like a fairy tale or a movie. In fact, I'm working on a movie right now. I might even sell it to Hollywood. <laughs> I already have a name for it. Black President. Picture it. Scene one. Home. A lot of times I think artists aren't appreciated until things are self-reflexive. Um, Hendrix couldn't blow up until he went to England and came back. A lot of the jazz guys in the forest had to go to Europe and come back. In many ways I think Fela's journey started here, went to the States and came back and now it's been perceived by another lens there and now brought back again. Which is I think the most important part of a diaspora conversation. So I think it's really right in line with a lot of his philosophy. So many things that Fela was talking about during his time, we weren't prepared to listen to, we weren't prepared to listen for. But now we've seen all of it come. We've seen it as if he was an oracle, prophetic, a prophet. And now people have a chance, given Nigeria in particular, to appreciate this guy who allowed his bones to be broken, to merely express ideas through song. Music is the weapon for Bella and Nicola Pogucci. That's what he used. And um, I think it's still a very powerful weapon and a powerful tool. No matter where it comes from, in the street, in the club, at work, find your own groove, do your own thing. Uh -huh. There's never been an original Broadway cast and an original Broadway set performed on African soil. You play New York, okay, that's where all the original people were and uh, that's where the show was created and developed. Uh, and then you play London at the National Theatre, which is the English language's most prestigious venue. You know, what do you do next? I mean, this show, to have the opportunity to come to Lagos, uh, and perform a Nigerian story, a story of a Lagos artist in front of essentially the home uh, population, you know, was something we couldn't resist. We made this show on Broadway so that we could take it there and so that we could bring it home. The location that for us has been a part of our imagination for years, you know, we've been studying this form, this story, this music, this movement. We've been creating our own technique around it. Coming full circle and going back to Africa with that music that's already gone to the Americas, back to Africa, back to the... I mean, it's been circling back and forth. It was a sea of people who know the music, who live the music, who grew up with it, who, you know, who sing it in the middle of the night in their dreams. So when they when they're living through this theatrical experience, you know, the sea would just rise and they would sing on cue. I mean, there's a moment where we just quote Shuffering and Smiling, just that much. They came in right on cue. I mean, it was, they didn't miss a beat. I mean, the, the entire audience responded, boom. Safa, Safa, for what? You can't deny that there's magic here. You can't deny that there's real dialogue, cultural dialogue 
happening. That the, and that, that this is a, a rebirth above and beyond what we could even dream of doing in our in our theater of today. You know. I've been a part of the Fela uh, crew since Off Broadway, and I am. Doing my final performances here in Lagos. I did my final performance yesterday. So I was always excited about the fact that Bill had accomplished, you know, telling an, Ameri uh, an African story on a, one of the best and biggest stages, you know, in the U.S. Um, so when they were saying it was going to Lagos, it just was um, beyond my expectations and beyond my dreams because that was, you know, Broadway to me was. You know the height of the, you know the the, the the pinnacle of you know what I thought my dream was would be, but coming over here has just blown everything out of the water for me. And on top of that was floating this possibility of us taking the show to Lagos, all right, to Nigeria, to where the story is born, to the synthesis of of the material that we are performing. I mean, we knew it, we had been doing it and we had been doing it well, but from a distance, which is always the safer bet. But now we were here with the people that know Fela and they know his music and they know the, the true meaning of music is the weapon. We'd start a song and they would sing the songs with I mean, who would have thought Fela the musical would be a sing-along? This is these people's story. They are counting, they, they look to the production and now they are counting on us to recreate the man and the message. To have the Nigerian people welcome us, embrace us with open arms and with, with their song, with their culture, with their warmth, to walk out of the building at the end of a show and have them mob you and say, well done. Well done, this is important for Nigeria. That's bigger and broader and, and far more spectacular and extraordinary than anything I could have fathomed about being involved in this production. I'm holding on to the feeling of the people needing this music, needing this occurrence, this bringing back a Fela to Nigeria. I think that they needed it. That there were things that Fela was singing about that the people need to be reminded about. It's very important that the people who were there bore witness to this show. That to remind them that this was a man who really loved his country. He loved his people. And he sacrificed and he was tortured and he went through a lot of changes to make things better. As wonderful as the audiences were in New York, we never had a response like that in New York. And I dare say in London either, where the people in the audience knew the song, knew every word of it, and they came in singing the response in tune, in time, and with this fervor that just, it filled me up. It filled me up to hear those people sing back at me. I mean, I've done a lot of theater. I've, I've been in a theater for 35, 40 years, and I've never had an experience like that in the theater, where I was made to feel so a part of the soul of the people who were sitting out there. They made me feel like I was part of them. Because when I think, when trouble sleepy, I'm gonna go wake up. Where did he get find? The people went, Palava! It was, was with such fervor and such power, it made me feel like I've never felt in the stage before. I've been doing theater a long time, like I said, and I've never felt this kind of feeling. It kind of hits on a whole bunch of levels. You know, when we do the show in Europe or in America, it's a story. But here is his story. Is also the fact that Fella's message in this Nigeria of today has tremendous relevance, maybe even more so in some respects than when he wrote it. You know, all the wives and the ganja and all that is all kind of faded. 
what's left is the legacy, is the, is the message, which has tremendous clarity and transparency to it. And so I think people are now starting to reassess what fella had to say. Then there's this damn show, which is so good. And I've, in my view, I've never seen it look better in New York or in London. I've got to be honest, tell the truth. It looks great here. You know? But I think that a large part of that is the, the way that all the ripples that run through the crowd, the way that everybody jumps up at the end, you know, and gives us a standing, a genuine standing ovation, not one that is licensed by a convention, theatrical convention, because they don't have any theatrical convention. A lot of people never seen it. He's a theater like that. It's never happened before. At the time, it was just the family continuing the legacy. But now, people from outside are continuing the legacy. I love the show. Thank you so much. I love the fact that the cast actually love and have learned about Fela, and he inspires them. And you can't ignore when you hear a message that was 30 years ago that, that you could say again today. I mean, you'd be a fool to ignore that. Everything he said then still applies today. So I think people are talking less about um, his character in that sense and talking more about the message that he, he was talking about in the 70s and 80s. This is the most powerful thing that's even happened here in... I, I, I can't even relate it to any time in the past. This is really, really a poignant moment right in the middle of elections to have Fela come back <laughs> to life. It's been incredible. The show has just been really, really tight. The music has been so tight. The band is great. And that's why I can't stop coming back. I'm here every single day getting as much live fella as possible. Original. I know we turn so mad And the horns, they blow. Can't wait for the next one. <laughs> Can't wait for the next one.